Let's take a look at question number two from chapter eight. So the question says a simple random sample of 50 items from a population with a standard deviation of six resulted in a sample mean of 32. We have three parts to this question. We need to prepare three different confidence intervals. One at a 90% confidence, a 95% confidence, and then a 99% confidence level. So we will first take a look at this 90% confidence interval. So we have everything given to us along the left side. and We have our formula from our formula sheet there in the middle. So our sample size was 50. Our population standard deviation was 6. Our x bar was 32. Then we come to alpha. Alpha we is our level of significance. We find that by taking 100% minus whatever our confidence level is. So our confidence level here is 90. So 100 minus 90 and we get 10. So alpha is 0.10. But if you notice over in the confidence interval formula, we need the z score for alpha divided by 2. So we'll make note of our alpha divided by 2 being 0.05. And we'll get to that um, in the formula later on. Now, before we can even use this formula, we need to prove that we're allowed to use a z score. So our proof, if you remember from a couple chapters ago, n is greater than or equal to 30 and sigma is given. So since that proof works out, we can now plug in what we know into this confidence interval formula. So our x bar is 32, our sigma is 6, and our n is 50. So we can definitely plug those in. Now we need to find a z score for 0.05. So this is where we need to now take a look at our z-score chart. And we're going to be looking at the areas, so those numbers in the middle of this table. And we're going to be looking for whatever is closest to 0.05. So it comes out to be right between two different z-scores. We have 1.64 and 1.65. Um, surrounding this 0.05 area that we need. So since it's directly between those two, what we do is we average those two z-scores. So we average 1.64 and 1.65. So the z-score that we're going to use here is 1.645. So we can now Take that z-score and multiply it by our standard error, which gets us this 1.4. Now 32 plus and minus 1.4 gives us our confidence interval here of 30.6 to 33.4. So we are 90% confident that the population mean would be somewhere between 30.6 and 33.4. So if we take a look at this next part of the question, the only piece that changes is our confidence level. So instead of a 90% confidence interval, we now need to make a 95% confidence interval. So alpha becomes 0.05. Alpha divided by 2 is now 0 0.025. So we just start plugging stuff back into our formula like we did in the last part. So 32 plus and minus a z-score that we're going to need to find, all uh, multiplied by 6 divided by the square root of 50. So we look up in our z-score table, and we're looking for 0 0.025 within the areas, within the numbers in the middle of our z-score table. So we find 0 0.025. 
and that z-score ends up being 1.96. So we plug that into our confidence interval formula. And then we take that 1.96, multiply it by the 6 over the square root of 50. We get 1.66 as our margin of error. So then 32 plus and minus that 1.66 gives us a confidence interval of 30.34 to 33.66. So again, we're 95% confident that the population mean will be somewhere between 30.34 and 33.66. So now the last part of this problem. They want us to make a 99% confidence interval. So alpha now is just 0 0.01, which means alpha divided by 2 is 0 0.005. So we plug everything into our confidence interval formula again. The only thing that's changing here is the z-score. So we look up the z-score now for 0 0.005. And what we find is that it's once again right between two different z-scores. So we are going to need to average 2.57 and 2.58. So the z-score that we're going to use is 2.575. We multiply that by our standard error again. So we get 32 plus and minus 2.185. So our confidence interval is 29.815 to 34.185. So we're 99% confident that our population mean will be somewhere between 29.815 and 34.185. So what does that mean when we take a look back at the three intervals that we made? Right? At 90%, at 95%, and at 99%. You'll notice this pattern that as the confidence level increases the interval gets wider and so that's going to be a rule that you can use to double check your math all throughout this chapter